Good morning, conservationists. Are we conservationists? Yeah. And what do we do? We protect the earth. We protect, we protect the, the earth. earth. Seal preschool classrooms need to be alive with language. From the time they're born, children begin honing in on the sounds that they're hearing that seem to have meaning, that seem to be used a lot, that are used in contexts that are important. And by the time they get to us in preschool, they have years of having developed some language and searching for the language. They are meaning makers through language. Language and cognition are deeply, deeply engaged. Porque las alas, ¿de qué color son las alas de la mariquita? Rojas, ¿de qué son las alas? ¿De qué color? ¿Cómo son las alas de la abeja? Son como azul. ¿Transparentes? Sí, son transparentes y güey, y son como blue. OK. Mm -hmm. Children develop language in two ways by hearing it, so they're picking up on the language that they're hearing, and by using it, actually producing it and finding ways to use it that have meaning to them. So the language we surround them with is hugely important. Ready? Oceans here, oceans there. Oceans, oceans everywhere. We have to create in our programs the ways in which children continue to be immersed in developing language. So one of our major tasks is to surround them with this wonderful language, the language that they need in the socio-emotional realm and in the interpersonal realm, in the academic world, and to talk about the world that they're learning about. Calabazas aquí, calabazas ahí, calabazas, calabazas alrededor de mí. Calabazas pequeñas creciendo, calabazas lisas rodando. It starts with just creating a lot of opportunities for them to use the language, safe opportunities, multiple opportunities. And those opportunities take place through engaging in conversation. You went to the park. What kind of park did you go to? Green. A green park? What did you do at the green park? Um, slide. You went down a slide? Through creating the openings when we're reading a book, they're talking about the book. They're being asked questions about the book. They're being invited to retell the story. Not I. Not I. Said the goose. Not I. I said the cat. When we're engaged in an activity, we're talking about what we're doing, and they're talking about what we're doing, and we ask them what sense they're making of it. The teacher needs to think of herself in several ways. One is, you're actually a language model. So let's start there. The language you are using, whether it's, I'm tying my scarf right now, I'm gonna put the top scarf through the bottom scarf and then pull it tight around my neck. Narrating what we're doing, narrating what children are doing so they hear words associated with actions. This last column is called Resources for Humans. That's kind of a lot. Why don't we say that together, ready? Resources for humans. I bet you guys know what humans are. What are humans? People, right? We are coaches. Children talk to us, begin to say something. We repeat back to them what they're saying and ask questions eliciting more. Or we add our own experience in response to what they've said so that they're hearing somebody else talking about a similar kind of thing and getting ideas for how language gets used. Benjamin, I see you're buying all this stuff from the thrift store. I just love <laughs> What do you plan to do with all this? Of the toys. They did? Did you know that these toys were donated to us? <gasps> so engaging them in conversation, question asking, modeling, narrating, and being very intentional in our exchanges and making time for those exchanges that they are getting that time in conversation with a user of the language. So part of it is we as the adult language models engaging with the children. The other is creating the ways and supports and opportunities for them to really use language with each other. Van a hablar con su compañero. Quiero que se sienten manos a manos, zapatos a zapatos, mirar a su compañero y sonreír. Plata, tú puedes empezar. 
Yo voy a comer tamales con chiles en a agua. No me gusta tomate. If you find a bottle, if, if you throw it in the trash, put it in the recycle. Creating places and spaces where we are asking them, share with your partner, what are you thinking about this? Or what did we just learn about? What was exciting to you about that? Share that with your partner. Here's how you might start. Um, giving them those supports and opportunities is very important. Lo que más me gustó de la historia fue. Me gustó que también el niño. A ti qué te gustó? In a preschool day, we should look at everything as an opportunity for language. So this is not just something that happens when we're sitting at circle time and I ask questions and I have you turn to a partner and say something. This is not just happen something that happens when I sit a child down for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. It should be happening throughout everything we do. If we're at a center, if we're engaged in pulling the seeds out of a pumpkin and exploring what's inside a pumpkin, there is going to be talk that's a part of that. I'm going to be talking as the adult. I'm going to be asking you for questions of what does that feel like and what does that look like. I'm going to be repeating back to you what each other's happening every moment of the day. We need to be recognizing as optimal times for really developing language. Mira, está en su mano y ese tiene puntos. Mira, mira, mira cómo los está abriendo. ¿Qué está abriendo para volar? Sus Labeling their world is one of those basic tasks for young children. They're always asking, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Something important that the whale has in order to breathe in the ocean is its blowhole. Say that with me. Blowhole. So this part of the whale is its blowhole. In a preschool classroom, particularly one with four and five-year-olds where they're beginning to attend to print or realize that print is there, actually labeling things makes a difference. Everything in this world has a name, has something that it's called, can be written down what it's called. They are learning to label their world. La enredadera. Aquí está el tallo. Digan conmigo, tallo. Es como agarramos la calabaza. Y todavía tiene todas las rayas. Y ahora ya la calabaza está madura. Calabaza madura. Digan conmigo, calabaza madura. There's a vocabulary that goes with those things that we're teaching that we want to be sure that they're learning. We want them to not just think of all animals as having noses. We want them to get that there's nostrils on one animal and a snout on another. That more specific, more precise, more complex vocabulary is really important and a total delight for children to recognize that they can make those distinctions and have those words. For dual language learners, we're talking not just one language, we're talking two languages. They need that rich, complex oral language in both of their languages. They need that early literacy foundation of oral language in both of their languages. And the wonderful magic of all of this is that the stronger their home language is, the stronger their English will be. Miren, a ver el tuyo, ¿cómo está el tuyo, Nico? Como un shark. Como un tiburón. Oh, picudo, muy bien. As they understand through their stronger language how language works and the power of language and the way in which language connects to print and connects to concepts, they're able to bridge that into English. The third stage in the life cycle of the ladybug. Say, I have. I have a pupa. Okay, so can you please put it up there? Perfect, just like that. The research is very, very clear about this, that the strongest approach to language development and early literacy development is simultaneous development of both languages, home language and English. Nectar, ¿de dónde sacan nectar las abejas? De las flores. ¿De las flores y para qué? 
Para hacer miel. So, there's a lot to know about this issue of oral language. It is so foundational, it is so important for young children. But really it boils down to just a few things. Number one, talk. Use language. Know your power as a language model, as a language coach, as a language narrator, as the person who can sweep children in to just the wonder of language. Un tiburón, un tiburón, nadando en el agua. Secondly, engage children in talking. So we're not just talking at them, but we want them to talk to us, converse with us, talk to each other, which means creating those opportunities. Third, everything we do with young children is an opportunity for language, and we need to go for it. What else are you going to add to your drawing? Where does the octopus live? On the water. So should we add some water to your drawing? Excellent. What color is the water that you're going to draw? Blue. Okay. Fourth, be thoughtful about the vocabulary that we're using and we're putting in front of them. Let's really go for the vocabulary they most need, they can most use, that is most expressive, and that will really give them the entree into the world of complex language. I sound around to help them. She pulled the tadpole and she's holding it upright. What does upright mean? Yeah, you put the holding it. You're holding it so it stays straight. Can you pretend you're holding a pole and you're holding it so it stays upright and the wind is coming? Shh. And finally, essentially, foundationally, super important. These are children with two languages. We need to honor both of those languages, develop both of those languages, and see to it that they have a life in our preschool programs. Alimentación. Alimentación. Comer. Comer. Se pueden parar. Gracias. Muy bien.